Hello everyone, this is Dreadnought on Inferno Friday. I'm about to do a run with Archon on Inferno to show you a little bit of the Inferno difficulty. Before that, I know a lot of you wanted to see my build, and so I'm just going to go over my abilities and a little bit of stat points just for a second so that the video has a little bit more meaning. I'm using Bash as my primary because of instigation. I'm using a two-handed weapon, and so Fury Generation is a little difficult. But when I'm hitting for 12 Fury every hit with my Bash, then Fury Generation becomes much more simple. I'm using Seismic Slam. This is actually my main ability. You're going to see me spamming this. The knockback is great to protect your range DPS, just keeping things away. Plus 200% weapon damage is a lot of damage. Leap is great because of the Iron Impact. I can jump right into the middle of a group and not worry about getting one shot because of that 300% additional armor. Ground Stomp to bring people into me. That 4 second stun is great for throwing in a lot of damage against things that you don't want to be standing next to. This is my heal. Uh, overpowered heals for 8% so if I can Ground Stomp 12 enemies into me which happens a lot of times then I'll heal the fool. All 27,000 health. Wrath of the Berserker I ruin with the insanity just because 100% increased damage is redonkulous. Uh, these aren't the passives that I'll be using. Um, I'm still not completely decided, but Pound of Flesh is really important um, if you have bonus health globe. If you have a lot of gear that has plus to health globe, um, then this is a really awesome because I have about 10,000 plus to health globe heals. And so this makes it up to 20,000 heals, and I find them a lot more often. And this will also help your ally, because more health globes for you means more health globes for everybody. So just to go into my stats real quick, you'll see that my damage has gone down about 8,000. That's because in Inferno, you're just going to have to sacrifice some damage for survivability. And I, I know that's really hard to do because you're thinking, well, now that things have more life, I need to do more damage. It's going to be the opposite. You just you need to accept that you're going to do less damage. And the reason is you need at least 100 in each of your resistances to do Inferno, in my opinion. I'm up to 200 right now uh, for each of the resistances, 27,000 life. If you're stacking a lot of vitality like I'm doing right now, it's not very helpful Inferno unless you have these resistances. So stack vitality if you have resistances. If you have lots of vitality and no resistances, then you know what you need to work on. Um, I also regenerate life a few ways, but the main way is life per kill. And that's just because I have a big two-handed weapon that doesn't swing very often. So life per hit is not great. And when you're trying to kite things around, um, life per second is, is nice. But I, I prefer the 2,000 life per kill just because my... Seismic Smash can kill large groups, sometimes healing me to full. My, I don't have all my globe gear on right now, but normally I'm at 10,000. And so that's a little breakdown of what I'm running right now. I've switched from Magic Find to Gold Find just because I'm actually making more money from gold, believe it or not, than I am from Magic Items. So this is a quick rundown of what I'm going to be using. A lot of this is changed because of a two-man group to give me a little bit of extra survivability and that seismic slam just to keep things away from the wizard. Just welcome to another installment of Inferno Friday. This week me and Dreadnought are actually going to be playing on Inferno. And we decided we would do Act 1, the Skeleton King quest. We were thinking about doing Act 2, but we figured you guys wouldn't want to watch us wiping over and over again. So we're going to do something a little bit easier. And we're recording this video a little bit early, it's Wednesday night, but it's actually uh, this week's Friday video. We won't be able to record Friday because it's actually my, I guess, wedding reception. I've been married for a year and a half, but we're finally having a reception, and so we wouldn't be able to record on Friday. But we thought we would just walk you through a little bit of Inferno and share with you the builds we've been using and some of the strats we found and let you guys see some of these champion and elite packs on the Inferno difficulty. And if you haven't played Inferno yet, it's quite a jump from Hell to Inferno. 
Nightmare to Hell was a big jump, but not quite as big as Helgo Inferno. And you're going to be surprised how fast things kill you. The white enemies are only slightly stronger, but the elite groups are what are really going to give you problems. They have four abilities instead of three. And Still waiting. they're just ridiculously strong. Things will one-shot you that you don't think uh, can possibly one-shot you even when you're stacking a lot of Vitality and Resistances. Yeah, hopefully we'll get to one of those packs here so you can see how hard they are. And you'll be able to compare that to the Skeleton King, who's relatively easy in comparison. Right now I'm using a build that is uh, kind of a spin on a build that I posted earlier today. Uh, I'm using Blizzard and Hydra as my two main attacks with Arcane Missile as my signature skill. I kind of use that as my single target DPS. Then I have Energy Armor and Magic Weapon to give me more defense and increased DPS. And then of course Teleport with Wormhole to get away from anything and just uh, travel through this place a little bit faster. I've had a lot of people posting and saying, what do we need to do in Inferno to survive? Because a lot of people get through the first three difficulties and then they get a little stumped. Here's the blue pack. Oh, there we go. Oh, and they have Mortar, too. And Our you might notice that we're doing a little bit less damage than we did in our previous videos, and that's because we're stacking a lot of defense now. And these fights are going to take a little bit longer, and you just have to accept that you're not going to do as much damage as you used to do. Um, because you're not going to be able to survive these fights long enough to kill people. Anymore, so. Yeah, one thing I found is when I start adding more defense, I can actually do more damage sometimes just because I'm able to attack uh, more often instead of having to run around and kite a lot. And you'll see here that I'm getting some cheap shots on these white guys. That's just to build fury real quick. I'm going to be frozen here and hopefully not die. Now these blues and yellows aren't too bad towards this start of Act 1. Uh, by the time you get to Act 2, uh, I don't even think we could attempt those blues and yellows yet. I just get demolished when I try it on my own. Yeah, we can we can kill things on, on Act 2, but just because you can kill things in an act doesn't mean that it's worth doing the act. Um, money is actually a lot more important than we originally thought it was going to be because the auction house is just so important because you can get the exact piece of gear that you want and for pretty cheap relatively, so you can grind for hours and hours and hours looking for that piece of gear and craft and craft and craft and a lot of times it's worth it, but most of the time it's not because the auction house is so convenient if you know how to do the right searches. Yeah, one thing we can't say about the harder difficulties and Inferno specifically is the this gear part. definitely gets better. Uh, We've heard that Hell has a chance to drop anything that could drop on Inferno, but from what we've seen so far, the gear just going from Hell Act 4 to Inferno Act 1, uh, it gets way better. In fact, we haven't really been able to sell anything on the auction house from Hell because there's enough Inferno gear up now that everyone would rather buy that. So if you can do, if you can do Inferno Act 1, don't be in such a rush to get to Act 2, because a lot of the Inferno gear and commodities dropped in Act 1 anyway, and so you're going to get a lot of Inferno gear and commodities just by doing Act 1, and Act 1 is significantly easier than Act 2. When we did this solo, Dreadnought had a pretty easy time with this event, but I had a, not such an easy time be a little challenging but these pillars are really weak so the key if you're having trouble with this is just to get the pillars down as quick as possible because they're just going to keep making those skeletons but if you're dreadnought you'll have no problem and they'll just go down right away my build is really aoe intensive and these skeletons are really susceptible to my shockwave or my um, seismic slam that has the 100% pushback and 200% uh, weapon damage yeah, one thing that's been helping us out as playing duo, I don't think I can make that. Oh, I can. This whole time I've been running around and I can just teleport across there. Sorry, one thing that's been helping us out a lot is Dreadnought's ability that gives us extra health orbs. It also kills me for an extra 100%, which makes my health orbs give me around 20,000 health. And 
when you have potions that only heal you for 12,000, it's almost a must to have those health orbs because the health potion cooldown is so long. And you might have a lot of life steal abilities, I do, but the health orbs are going to save you a, a lot of, of tithing time for your life steal abilities to come up. Instead, you can just look for those life orbs that give you 20k heals. Yeah, especially if you stack 10k extra health from health orbs like Dreadnought. I'm not sure how many I have, have right now, but I think just a couple thousand. So we're almost to the Skeleton King. You guys can see how big of a pushover this guy is. We didn't really get to see any of the more challenging blues and yellows. Some of those combinations can get pretty nasty. So we just got our one stack of Nephilim, uh, but that's that's fine. When you're fighting the Skeleton King of two-person group, as the melee, keep in mind that his first attack is his, his strong attack. He has one strong attack he does that can solo me, and I have a decent amount of health and a lot of resistances, so just watch out for that first attack of this one right here. You probably know it. That's really the only one you have to watch out for. The Skeleton King, you'll notice, has just under 6 million life in Inferno with two people. Um, a lot of the enemies just have ridiculous amounts of life with two people in Inferno. And so you have to have a build for longevity. I used to just stack a lot of damage and life steal in Hell Mode so that I could end fights before they got too difficult, before my wrath ran out. And a lot of times that's just not going to be possible in Inferno. So Time to change your, your gear a little bit, and maybe even your abilities, but change gear first, and then abilities uh, is my motto. Yeah, I know a lot of people at low levels are using the uh, I'll just kill them before they can kill me strategy, which actually might be the best strategy on normal, but uh, Inferno, it definitely doesn't work. Uh, I used to have Archon in my build, and it's possible I'll put it back in for those blue and yellows, but it's just not as viable on Inferno. On Nightmare or Hell, I could probably finish off the blues or yellows before Archon ran out, but it doesn't happen very often. Yeah, I would have gotten killed right there if I hadn't had my 300% additional armor from the leap. Oh, did you get hit by the big attack? Yeah. I didn't plan on surviving because of the leap. I just wasn't paying enough attention to what he was doing. But <laughs> yeah, you can see he just hit me there and it took out you know, maybe 20% of my health. That's mostly thanks to energy armor and uh, the fact that I've been stacking plus to armor and plus to all resistance gear. And those two in combination have given me about 70% damage reduction from armor and almost 70% damage reduction from resistances. And those two combined make it so I'm taking, uh, I don't know, roughly 10% I think of all damage. A lot of times when you're changing from one difficulty to another, it's it's hard to get yourself to change your abilities because when you're Act 4 Hell Mode, a lot of times you get so strong you feel like a superhero and then you get to Inferno and all of a sudden you're weak again, you're just a normal mortal that can get one shot again. Um, and so when you go and start looking at all your gear and your abilities and you're trying to figure out what you have to, what damage you have to give up to get some of these annoying defensive abilities, I start with the passive abilities because um, I get into a routine with my abilities where I just I know what button does what and I don't have to think about it too much and I get into it. And, and changing your passives isn't going to necessarily change your routine. Up. And so start with the passives, um, then go to some of the gear changes if you have enough money or, or some defensive gear stacked away. And then when all that fails, then you're going to move to some more defensive abilities. Well, loot wasn't that great. Probably because just the single stack of Nephilim. I got three blues. What about you? Yeah. Normally he drops one to three yellows if you're at a five stack of Nephilim and if you are if you have a Topaz in your helmet. See, so yeah, that's all we guys... That's all we want to show you this week. Um, next week we'll be posting another video of Inferno. Hopefully we'll be able to play in Act 2 that week, but we'll have to wait and see. If you guys haven't subscribed already... Please do that so you can catch our new videos as soon as we post them. We've been posting a lot of uh, Wizard Strat videos on my channel and Barbarian Strat videos on Dreadnought's channel.
so to get the next video right when it comes out hit the subscribe button up top thanks for watching guys and we will catch you next week